Hi everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at how you can make a salt from a metal and an acid. Remember, a salt is a substance made by neutralising an acid. So in here I've got some hydrochloric acid and I've got some pieces of magnesium and you can probably see it fizzing away quite furiously. So I'm going to test what that gas might be that's being made in all of those gas bubbles. So I've got a lit splint and I'm going to put it at the mouth of the test tube and that squeaky pop sound tells us that it's hydrogen gas that's being produced. So when we've got a metal like magnesium reacting with an acid like hydrochloric acid, we make a salt and hydrogen. So the way we remember this is metal and acid make salt and hydrogen and that spells out mash. So that's one way of remembering it. So if you've got a fairly reactive metal like magnesium, that's one way you can make a salt. Something like copper, which is much lower down the reactivity series, you'd get no reaction. So the rule is, if it's more, if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen on the reactivity series, you will get a reaction and you'd make a salt and hydrogen. Obviously things near the top of the reactivity series, like potassium and sodium, it would be too dangerous to put those in with um, acid. So what we're going to have a look at now is how you can actually make a salt using a metal and an acid. Making a salt is one of those practicals you can be asked about on your exam and it's often a six mark question on paper one. So it could be they ask you how to make a salt from a metal and an acid. So you need to be very specific with your method. So the first thing you would do is measure out a known volume of acid. So you could say 50 centimetres cubed, you could you could say 60, it goes up to 100 on the measuring cylinder, so I'm going to say 25 centimetres cubed. So I'm measuring out 25 centimetres cubed of acid into a beaker with my measuring cylinder, and then I'm going to add the metal. In this case I'm using magnesium, which will work because it's higher than hydrogen on the reactivity series. So I add a small amount of uh, the metal, and we can see there it's starting to react, it's starting to fizz, it's making the hydrogen gas. Now in this case we're making magnesium chloride because we've got magnesium and hydrochloric acid so that's going to make magnesium chloride and hydrogen. If instead I use sulfuric acid, magnesium plus sulfuric acid would be magnesium sulfate and hydrogen. If it was nitric acid it would be magnesium nitrate and hydrogen. So the acid used to start with determines what the salt is made in the end. Similarly, if I swap the metal, instead of using magnesium, if I use zinc and hydrochloric acid, then the salt would be zinc chloride and hydrogen. So how much metal do I put in? Because we've been specific about the uh, volume of acid. Well, the answer is we put in excess. And that means we put in too much so that all of the acid reacts. So what I'm going to do is leave this fizzing away there and we're going to come back to that. When it stops bubbling, we know that all of the acid has been used up and there should still be some magnesium left over because that will be the reactant in excess. So we'll come back to that shortly. This has had about 15 minutes to react now and we can see it's finished reacting because it's not bubbling anymore so it's no longer producing hydrogen and that's because all of the acid has been used up because we added excess magnesium. So we've got here our magnesium chloride solution plus the excess magnesium. So we need to take out all those pieces of magnesium and we'll do that by filtering the solution. So that will obviously take a few minutes to filter. When it's all filtered through, we're then going to pour the magnesium solution, the magnesium chloride solution I should say, into the evaporating dish and you'll see that we're heating it over a water bath for more controlled, gentle heating rather than putting the evaporating dish straight on top of the gauze. And we don't heat it until all of the water has gone. We heat it until either half the water is evaporated or until we start seeing crystals appearing around the edge. And at that point, we take it off the heat, we let the rest of the water evaporate naturally over the next few days and then to get a pure dry product, 
we would then either put the crystals in a desiccator which will draw all the water out of them or we could put them in an oven to dry. So that's how you make a salt from a metal and an acid. Make sure you know all of those steps for your exam.